Okay. I'm here to explain you why is the new Scala compiler Dotty on average twice faster than the current compiler Scala C. And the basic idea and the main reason why it's faster is because we organize our phases differently. So here on the screen you can see the way how normally and in previous Scala C compiler R phases organizes. So you have something called ma macro phases, which takes the entire compilation units, the entire AST, and the black box does the whole unit compilation unit to a whole compilation unit transformation. Uh, in practice, you have multiple phases like this. So you have some yellow phase, which takes the initial blue phase after typer, transforms it, recreates a new tree, then the next phase comes, transforms the entire compilation tree, recreates a new one, and you have multiple phases like those. So in practice, you're compiling big files. In practice, the, when the yellow phase iterates over the blue tree and starts creating the yellow tree, a lot of time passes, and the blue tree gets promoted to the old generation. And because a lot of time passes, uh, the blue tree, it's called for it. Every time it goes deeper inside the tree, it's need to do, it needs to do a called read. By the time it created the yellow tree, the blue tree is entirely in the old generation. And then the green tree comes, the green phase comes, and starts transforming the big yellow tree from the root every time doing a cold read. So that's why if you try to profile Scala standard Scala compiler, you don't see any particular bottlenecks, but for some reason everything is equally slow. The main reason, the main thing is if you take you can tell Vtune, you will see that most of the reads are cold reads. Most of the caches aren't helping us. So what we did instead, okay, so to sum up, in micro, micro phases, you're almost always reading the cold data. All the phases are free to decide how they transform the tree and how they traverse the tree, creating the new subtrees, and because they do it long, everything gets promoted to the old generation. It, it leads to interesting design decisions. So for example, in standard Scala compiler, there's a phase called lazy vals. Funny enough, it doesn't implement lazy vals. Uh, <laughs> So, standard Scala compiler has 25 phases. Because the problem here is, is uh, every time you introduce a macro phase, you introduce an, all this traversal of the tree, all this creation of a new tree, and it costs you a lot in terms of compilation time. To save on compilation time, you will want to reduce number of macro phases. You will start joining the independent transformations together and then you'll have a maintenance cost for it. Then you'll have a phase which does multiple things, half of which are not documented. You want to touch a small thing inside it, but there is a lot of code around it that you don't understand how it works. You touch it, it breaks, it explodes. And even better, if you don't have self-verification framework, it explodes to some byte code to somebody in production. Yeah. So what we have instead is we have many phases. Our phases don't control the order in which the trees are transformed. They don't control the order in which trees are uh, observed, they, we impose the order that it's from leaves to root. And then we can take all the subtrees separately and pipeline them through multiple phases at once. They sh because they can't see the root of the tree, they can't see that it wasn't transformed yet. And we can recreate the trees early in small parts that yet recreate the tree. So for example, the tree created by yellow, it just was created, it's hot, it's in young generation. Then the green guy who exited it has perfect cache locality. And if it changes the tree, it dies young. It never gets promoted to the old generation. So the way it works in practice is, let's say we start with blue tree, and then we have the same red, orange transformer. He changes a small thing. So we have a yellow transformer who changes the blue guy to the yellow guy, dropping the child. That's fine. Then the green phase restructures the small tree. Then we have this new transformation, and we reconstruct the tree out of it. So it's an interesting model to code in because some of the standard algorithms which were previously able to decide in which order they transform the tree now need to follow the common pattern. But then it's very easy to understand how they work as soon as they're written. You don't have surprises from phases to do strange orders of traversals and somehow end up being exponential in some use cases. Uh, the trees are always hot, you're always fast. You don't create much garbage. And that's why our footprint is better than the footprint of Scala C. Okay, so I'm perfectly in five minutes. So for the, for the interested ones, I have several other topics to cover. 
So one is why how we're able to develop the compiler faster and move with more consciousness and be sure that we're doing the right thing. And how do we do closed world optimizations, both language specific and library specific, and how we do something very similar to symbolic execution. Okay, thank you. <laughs>